Welcome to Living Fullness, a podcast where two unusual friends explore all things friendships, relationships, and the Christian life. My name is Dina Constantine. And I'm Father Sean Burns. And each month, we bring you a guest, someone who will share their experience and strengths with us, helping us to learn, grow, and live life to the full. podcast. Today we're blessed with two wonderful guests and uh, Stina, please take away. Yeah, I'm super excited to be able to introduce our guests um, to everyone today. We have Dr. Andrew and Sarah Swafford here with us. They are both former collegiate athletes who found Jesus Christ in a powerful way in college and have devoted their entire lives to sharing the joy of his truth. They speak frequently across the United States as well as overseas. So we've seen them in Australia. They've been out to Europe and to the Philippines as well. And they speak on topics like dating, marriage, the moral and spiritual life and sacred scripture. Sarah is the author of Emotional Virtue, A Guide to Drama-Free Relationships, and Andrew is a professor of theology at Benedictine College. He is general editor and contributor to the Great Adventure Bible, and among his publications are What We Believe, The Beauty of the Catholic Faith, and Ascension's Bible Studies on Romans and Hebrews. They have been married for 17 years and together have five children. So all the way from Atchison, Kansas, Andrew and Sarah Swafford, welcome to the Living Fullness Podcast. Hey, it is so great to be with you guys. It's so great to be with you and your accent. Ah. I love your accent so much. We could say the I same for you guys. The first couple That's times. Right. That's right. Oh, I got to come to Sydney for World Youth yeah. Day way back in the day. Yeah, yeah. That was my first time ever being in Australia. Oh. And I just walked around. I was like, just talk to me. Keep talking to me. I love your accent. Oh, she was glowing when she got back. Oh, I she could love not it. Get enough. Well, it's true. I was like, was I born in the right country? Oh, I'm no. sure I was born, but I really like visiting you over there. Put me on Bondi Beach for for, for my a long time. I will stay there for as long as the Bless. Um, Bless. It's great to be with you. I said. I told Andy, I couldn't wait for Swaff to meet you guys. Yeah, so thanks so much for yeah. Me. It was so awesome to be able to meet you in person, Sarah, when you came out a few years ago. Um, can't remember what year it was, but you came out and did a few it's a few talks wild. across New South Wales um, and and Victoria as well, which was such yeah. like such an awesome awesome experience. And then to be able to meet you now as well, Andy, it's just yeah, awesome. So <laughs> thank you so much for being here. Blessing. Yeah, thanks for having us. I was telling you off air, we're hiding in Andy's <laughs> office up here at Benedictine College. Everyone's always like, is that your house? And where are your children? It's kind of quiet. We are purposely here because it's quiet. They're hiding. Uh, they're hiding. They're, no, I'm kidding. They're just um, super disciplined, the super holy. So, yeah, they're just so quiet. They're so good. They're so polite. Um, no, we have a three-year-old who would be sitting on my lap mm. and his head would be just like sure, popping sure, sure. Yeah. Uh, So this way actually talk to us and we're yeah. excited to be with you all so uh, but yeah but hello to all of the Australians that are listening we love you thank you for always just being such a light over there because I know it's very very hard to be Christian mm. to be Catholic to be faithful over there and it's very hard to just even just to, to live like a life of just moral goodness and beauty and truth and so I just, I loved being over there, but I know you're fighting some intense battles and hello to all the Americans that are also joining us tonight. We have a lot in common with our Aussie friends. And so it's just really wonderful to have these two beautiful communities, people from all over the world probably joining us tonight. Yeah, bless. Thank you. Um, we might just kick it off with, we've got a few questions that we'd like to get through and we suspect we're probably not going to get through all of them. So that's okay. We'll just, we'll just see where this we conversation do, we goes. Talk, we talk fast, that's not okay. as fast as the Aussies, but we do talk fast. Both of us. We'll, we'll slow down and oh, get as many questions in here as, in as we can. Okay. We'll just we'll just see where this goes. So really the first question okay. um, for me is uh, I came across your work, Sarah, many a years ago and it really was a time and a space where social media just wasn't that big of a deal. Like we had Facebook, Instagram I don't think really was a thing um, and so I guess emotional virtue looked a little different back then as opposed to the way it looks now. So I'd love for the both of you to be able to sort of talk a little bit through what you see that change 
looking like in terms of relationships and in terms of living out emotional virtue in the here and now when we have a culture and a world that is so um, fast and so about immediacy and, you know, we have fast fashion and we have relationships that move so quickly. They go from skipping courtship to just going straight into, you know, sexual relations or moving in straight away or, and, and buying a house and not thinking about children and marriage, but just getting a fur baby. Like we're just sort of skipping and going to that next next spot all the time. So how do you sort of see things having changed or what do you, what do you think that might be about? And also what do you see the challenges being here now and what can we do about that? Oh my gosh. I'm so glad we have seven hours. To talk about everything we want to talk about. This is why I said kidding, we might kidding, not get kidding. through all the questions. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just kidding. Uh, that's just such a loaded yeah, question. Yeah, it's like, yeah. wow, I started, I started doing ministry uh, as a dorm director in 2007. So don't do the math. I'm 25. It's fine. Just don't do the math. But um, we've been at this for a while. And mm-hmm. yeah, you're right. I started in the dorms watching Facebook blow up and texting this thing called texting, uh, which I think is, has changed relationships just as much, if not more. Um, and then Snapchat kind of took over texting in some ways. And now we have TikTok and we have like just a whole other world. Um, so I know I have a lot of thoughts about it. I think I'm going to let Swaf go first because everyone thinks that, Oh, Sarah's the relationship school. I'm like, everything I've learned, I've learned. From so I, I think I'm going to have him start and then I'll jump in after because I'm kind of excited to hear what he has mm. to say too. Well, I mean, you know, the States, the way we say it is I married up. Oh, so, sweet. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> can't you do are beautiful. You know, I mean, there's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> you know, oh, there's so much that I don't, this is not an answer, but the first thing that comes to mind is, so on the one hand, so much has changed. So much has changed. But yet in some ways, human nature is what it is year after year after year. So one of the things, just for example, that I do in my uh, moral theology classes, I, I give them a 48 hour tech fast, right? So they can, uh, they can't surf the web. They can't use social media. They can't text. They can receive phone calls and they can make phone calls. They can, um, work and school emails, but that's it. And they write a reflection paper on it. And, and they always complain and they're like, oh, you're going to make us do what? They just can't believe it. And almost to a T, every time when I get the papers back, they report reduced anxiety. They report better sleep. They report better conversations. They often will say, I couldn't believe how much everybody else was on their phones. And they'll talk <laughs> about how hard the second day was. And they'll often say, I couldn't believe you made us do this, but I hope to do it again someday. So, I, I mean, I, this is kind of a cheap answer, but I think one, an, you know, and we could talk about our time in Florence with the students. I, yeah. I think part of it is, can we unplug and not simply get swept up in what everybody else is doing and have this, as much as we like the connection communication wise and all these advantages of modern technology, mm-hmm. there is a danger of kind of a global culture, just steamrolling everything local and this kind of forced conformity that unless you get swept up in this thing, then you're just going to be left out. And it's like, no, no, what we need are, and this gets, I mean, what we need are small pockets of resistance of, of, of real communities on fire for Jesus. I think back to JP2 and Poland and communism. I think about the things that we've done with students here, these sort of small, because, because you feel like people are afraid because they think they're alone. They think I'm the only one that thinks differently. So I just have to kind of play along with the moment they realize, Hey, there's, there's Stina, there, there, there's father Burns. There's, there's other people who love Jesus. and want to build friendships and relationships based upon this. And you get two or three or four or five or six, all of a sudden you create a new normal. And I think honestly, the long answer is you, we got to have the courage to create a new normal. Mm. Yeah. I mean, so everything you said, cause it's so beautiful, but also I think that we like we have seen this firsthand because we're old like we've married 17 years and like we're we're about to hit the he hit the 40 train about to I'm, i turned 39 for the first time this Woo-hoo. year so i'm planning on <laughs> turning it a few more times here i'm kidding um but we're kind of old and so we actually our entire dating relationship um we didn't have social media texting uh, I mean, we had phones cell phones were like the really big nokia ones that were like too heavy to carry in your purse Do you remember that? Uh, You don't. Um, So anyway, like I just, I really, I have such a heart for this because I'm like, oh my gosh, how would we have handled this? Um, And so when I say, when I saw like what was happening in the dorms, I was like, this is crazy. You know, like just watching the way I knew it was going to change the way people communicate. 
Well, now you fast forward and, you know, we, I'm about to go do all these Steubenville conferences with these high schoolers and these, these kids, um, young adults, young people, um, probably got their first phone when they were like eight or nine or 10. Um, and so the, the idea of like, wow, remember when, before we had MapQuest or directions or a GPS, like that is over. That is so over. Even the like twenties and 25 year olds grew up with Instagram or grew up with Snapchat like that. That's real. So I think that uh, you're, you know, you're that demographic of like 15 to 35. Um, this is not going away. And I think that to just be like, oh, well, it's fine. Like, I will just text my friends and I will just, you know, be on social media, scroll, whatever. It's like that is like I'm grateful for technology. We're sitting here talking to you. But we always say, let's use technology to gather everyone, like to get everybody to make sure everyone knows where each other is at. Like we I was about to say, if you would ask me this question before COVID, I would have had a different answer. Yeah. I think COVID has changed the game immensely. Um, and that's what we're writing our book right now together. And I'm like, oh my gosh, but what about this? But what about this? But what about this? Um, because a lot of people, we hang out with a lot of young adults and they're like, literally, I have men that come up to me and are like, uh, could you like give a talk? I'm like, how to flirt again? Or like, uh, how do we talk to women again? And they're not being, they're being that kind of like, haha, I forgot how to, but they're like a hundred percent serious. Like, I don't know how to leave my house. And girls are like, I'm just terrified to like get dressed up and like go out and like, it's just way more comfortable to just like sit on my couch and eat Cheez-Its and like oh, no. preach. But at the same time, it's like, I know I need to be out there again, you know? And I think people are like, it's just so much easier to sit on the sidelines and watch, but they know that they're missing their life. They know they're missing out on something. And so the very long answer to this is we've got to get people back with like in each other's presence. Mm. And, and, and I know it's a big ask, but you know, we were just sitting there talking about like, drop a hint. Like we, we were doing the, one of the dating talk, you know, talk, and there's this phenomenal little meme. Um, oh, what do you call that? Like a little real, real. See, hi, G- geriatrical, <laughs> geriatric millennial trying to make it. It's a real. And this guy is talking about how back in the day, a woman would like drop her handkerchief mm. and the guy would be like, oh, you dropped this. Like you dropped your handkerchief. She'd be like, did I really? Like she totally dropped it on purpose. Yeah, yeah. Would, like pick it up and for the conversation. And they were like, they dropped the handkerchief, like drop the hint. And I looked, I was telling Swaff, like it, it made its rounds on social media. And I said, this is so hard. Like, again, I'm always quick to stand up for the women and men of this, gener- of the, of this generation, the young adults, because I'm like, no one carries a hanky. And there's no really anybody around them. Like the guy that they really might be interested in or the girl that, you know, that the guy is interested in, they're not even standing in the same, they're not passing each other on the sidewalk. And so we were, we were chatting about like, what does this look like for them? Because they can't even drop hints. I mean, passing your number to bar or, you know, DMing someone on Instagram, that's just a different way of having to navigate relationships than, than we're used to. Or even that's, to be honest, that's hard. That's even harder. Cause like, what did he mean by that? What did she mean by that? So this is a very long way of saying our goal is always to push people together. And, and again, we're not saying like we have a joke right now. We're about to host our first um, find your spouse at our house event. Oh, um, and it's a joke because we have all these young adults that are like, I don't know where to meet people. I'm like, well, then I'll throw a party in my Good house. Good on you guys. And it oh. started as a joke and now it's not a joke. <laughs> yes. So I'm like, find your spouse at my house. This is not going to be awkward. That's the, the subtitle. Well, the, the don't for, make the, this the awkward. for that to happen. <laughs> is to not be trying to make it happen. Right. Yeah, the key for this Catch happens. fire and run to Jesus. Yes, and these things happen on accident. But the moment you try to manipulate that, yeah. that's all you're interested yes. in. It just goes yes. Yes. So we talked about how many young adult events get really creepy really mm-hmm. fast, right? And so it's like, what you need to do is you need to find like a, a group of girls that are running together, let's say five, and a group of guys that are like on fire, you know, for the Lord, or even just searching, seeking. Dude, I'm so tired of going to the bar for happy hour and then going to another bar and then talking to people about nothing and then going home only to like either have regrets or to be like, that was like pointless again and then doing it again. And I think some people are just over it. And I think they're like, there has to be a better way. But I don't even know where these people are that maybe have a better way or, or whatever. So I always say invite two friends. Like, have you know, I'm always like, always invite two friends. It's the power of the invite. It's about being a person that says, Hey, we're all going out. This is where we're going. Get a crew together and then invite as many people as you can. Because again, it's not a flirt fest. It's not, 
I'm not going to find a spouse. It's more just like, I need to meet some solid friends. You know, people who are just good friends that I can run with, that I can be honest with, that I can just really live life with and struggle, talk about all these struggles with, because it is so easy to feel alone and isolated right now. It's like, oh, it's just palpable. Like on my DM, it's full of people who are like, I am so tired of being tired. And I don't even know how to like live a full life anymore. And I don't know if I knew before COVID and now I'm just really it's just like grasping at what is it that even makes me come alive again? So that's something that we've been really wrestling with. And, and yes, it's changed a lot. It's going to change every couple of years because social media platforms. Mm, yeah, exactly. Exactly. We need to just be ready for it. Yeah. Like in my book, we purposely never named anything because we knew it would be <laughs> extinct before. You know? Yeah. Oh so yeah. I was like, yeah. social media, yeah. texting. I mean, even now there's things that are, I should have had like FaceTime in there or, you know, there's things that have come up that, you know, it's like you just can't keep No, up, so. no. And so having that fortitude that you were talking about then, Andrew, is so important in this space, especially when things are moving and will keep moving and things will be foreign, things yeah. will be new, things will be uncomfortable all the time. Mm. Yeah. Andy always talks about, like, if you don't get that foundation, mm. you know, like we talk about, like, phones. Okay, right now it's like, oh, our phones. Well, in – a couple of years, it's going to be something different. Mm. I mean, it, we again, if you don't control your phone, it'll control right. you. If you don't control your social media, it'll control mm. you. If you don't navigate it and dictate it and tell it what to do, it will tell you what yeah. to do. And that's something we try to instill in our kids. Like, you know, whether it's money or emotions or social media or phones or any type of screen, if you don't have like a firm hold on what you want it to do and how it's going to, what you're going to let it do and what, what you're going to let in and what you're not going to let in. If you don't have a hold on that, oh, it will just steamroll you. And we're all products of that in some way, right? We're all products of being beat up by media in some way, uh, whether it was a rude comment or someone saying something to you or the lack of, you know, just the, the way you feel insecure sometimes when you're in that space. Um, like I said, I can't imagine what it's like to be single and searching for answers about life and faith and yourself on TikTok or on, I mean, to just be searching that place, that space, there is good out there and you can find good on YouTube and on all the different, you know, media outlets, but holy cow, it can really, it can really, it can really be mm. too fast right. too though. There's a, a bit of a follow-up question I'd like to sort of ask to that, which is um, <clears throat> when, when, uh, when technology sort of increases as it has sort of an, at an exponential rate over the last, oh, let's say, 100 years, really, but but let's just, just limit it a little bit, let's say, since the 50s or 60s, um, uh, the and, and there's no moral growth with that. There's no sort of moral development or moral reflection about how that technology is, is, is used. Um, uh, it kind of feels like we're... Um, we're not just behind the eight ball. We're like, you know, 800 kilometers the other side of the eight ball. I'm not sure what that is in miles. Sorry. Right. <laughs> right. No, anyway, no, no, you're good. I got you. <laughs> International <laughs> industry. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Wait, how far is that? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I love it. Um, so it, it, it sort of feels like there's, there's in terms of, of moral growth and development, um, it, it, it hasn't happened for so long. And now there's a recognition of, okay, there's, we actually need to ask how we use technology morally, but the question hasn't really been, sure. it hasn't been front and center for so long. Where do we, I mean, where do you start? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I mean, I, I, the first thing I thought of is, and I don't know the details, but I've heard a number of accounts of like, whether it's Mark Zuckerberg or, or what, how these elites handle handle it with their kids mm -hmm. and how restrictive they sometimes are because they know that it's like a drug. And so, I mean, I think we probably should pay attention to that. One of the things I like to talk about, uh, you, we, we sometimes talk about orthodoxy, right belief, and maybe orthopraxis, right action, but some kind of orthopathy in terms of what is coming in and forming my heart. I mean, they, they you know, Plato and Aristotle, people like that, they got this, that, you know, if you don't till the heart, um, it's going to make it really hard to live the life well. And so whether it's, you know, technology and phones and all these things that are coming in, um, you know, if I think of like my soul, my heart, my mind as like a pond or a lake and a bunch of streams flowing in, if those streams are dirty, it's going to be really hard to keep this lake clean and pure. 
uh, try as I might. And so, uh, you know, I'm, and I'm not anti-technology, I'm not anti-phone, uh, but I also know that if it feels I think one, what's forming my heart, what's for my mind, who am I, what voices am I listening to? I think two, on the other side, if I had to pick, and there's so many causes, but one clear cause, in my opinion, for secularization, I look at busyness, just the frenetic pace of our modern lives. And if all I can think about is how do I get to the next thing? And if every waking dull moment is filled with mindless scrolling, mm-hmm. I'm just not, when I get a student who comes to me and says, you know, I'm really sure with the faith, I'll say, hey, when was the last time you went outside at night and looked up at the stars? When was the last time you rekindled mm-hmm. that awe and wonder you had as a child? Yes. And my fear is that a hyper, you know, pace of busyness in conjunction with technology that constantly fills any any waking moment where we just don't want to sit alone with ourselves. Amen. Right? We don't, just where will we be able to hear the voice of God? Yeah. And reflect on what it's all about. Um, so I think that's my fear. It's not that I'm anti-technology, mm-hmm. but sure, sure. Uh, it's just the crutch that fills any and all silence. And really, that that yeah. forty-eight hour fast—that's really designed to kind of reawaken those those lines of communication to our Lord, to transcendent truth, to kind of just reevaluate your life. And so many of them—I mean, I mentioned some of the things they say. Others will say, you know, I had like three hours and I started drawing. I used to draw <laughs> as a kid. I never have time anymore. And like all of a sudden, I had all this time. It's mm-hmm. like. Again, that's my fear is that we just kind of like back into this consumption that just dominates our life. And, and, you know, there's a I mean, you know, we could talk more about like the deadly sin of sloth or achadia or something Mm -hmm. like acedia. I think that fits in here as well, which is kind of a sadness, a sorrow at the difficulty of spiritual good. Yeah. We don't want to rest that sadness. We kind of fill it up with entertainment or pleasure. I mean, so. Or even overworking, being busy, like Mm -hmm. uh, Mm -hmm. So I, I, yeah, this is a long-winded answer, but I think it, it's more than no, just dating. It's it's a it's a <clears throat> spiritual malaise that besets our culture. That's not. I think technology plays into it because it increases our pace, but it also steals our moments of silence. Mm. And I'll just piggyback on that just really quickly. I think that what I see on social media, Andy's on Twitter, and I'm on Instagram, and we sometimes laugh at even how different those two mm-hmm. are. Um, I'm also on Facebook. Uh, with my grandma and all of the moms and dads love them and all my high school friends. I mean, it's funny, like the lack of, you know, people after I give a high school talk, they're like, what's your TikTok? What do you have a podcast? You know, those are like the first two questions they ask. I'm like, no, I'm ancient of days over here on the Instagram. Um, but, you know, just thinking about like, again, I like to put myself in the place of young adults or even, you know, just us, you know, and what he sees on Twitter, what I see on Instagram and just even the difference is there. But, but one thing I will say is this. There are going to be studies done on this. We are the guinea pigs. We know that. That is that is a problem. Like, we, we know this is going to be a problem, right? Um, but I think that, like Andy said, what it makes us, like, not only quicken the pace, but I feel like social media for me, again, this is just true confessions. Um, when I slow down and I look at the stars and I go to adoration and I go on a walk and I play with my kids and I cook a dinner and I visit my friends and I visit my family and I do all those things that have nothing to do with a phone. I am very like, I'm very much in in touch with and content with who I am. Mm. And when I'm on the phone, I am very in touch with what I'm not Mm. and everything that I'm not. And I I like to bring this up because I'm like, if I'm a, I'm a 39 year old mother of five and I will get on the stupid phone and be like, Oh, I need that. I need that. Mm. My house doesn't look like that. Uh, I, I, I don't look like that. Um, how did she eliminate every pore on her skin? That's amazing. I need that. Um, I don't drive that. I don't have that. I don't. Oh, okay. So I'm also, and I, sometimes I scroll and I, I go there looking for like comfort or praise, or I'm bored with what I'm doing in the moment, or I'm looking for just like a funny Jimmy Fallon reel, or, you know, I'm looking for something to like fill me up or to validate me, or even sometimes you run across some really beautiful stuff, like, yes. But there's nine times out of 10, I put my phone do- down going, wow, that, that didn't really help. No, um, no. Um, I'm feeling a little bit that I have anxiety now because I'm like, oh, I didn't cook that, I yeah. didn't do that, yeah. I don't look like that, and now I'm just tired yeah. um, and kind of bitter and a little bit overwhelmed. Yeah. So, and I'm kidding, I'm, I'm, I'm exaggerating, but I'm not. Mm-hmm. And I think that, that sometimes when I get in touch with like our Lord, I'm like, oh my gosh, everything that I just feel so loved and I feel so that like valuable and appreciated. And then sometimes I jump on social media and I'm like, 
what am I even doing with my life? Like I, I need to, I feel I mean, all these expectations I feel like come upon me. And again, I'm being kind of exaggerant, but I think everyone knows, is that a word? Exact. I'm exaggerating. Exactly. Exaggerant. I make up words. On <laughs> I love it. No um, but you know, it, it's Australian. It's yeah. Australian. Yeah. Australian. Yeah. You, just, you just shortened the word. It's exactly. That is, exactly. That is, that is exactly. But yeah. Catch on. Exaggerant. I'm being exaggerant. I'm being exaggerant. <laughs> Cut the word in half. That's, That's how right. Aussies That's do how, it. Um, so anyway, movie. long story short, putting your phone down and getting in touch with who you are and who's you. Yes. Are. yes. Like you, like yeah. the Lord loves you and you are enough. And every time you put your phone down and feel like you're not enough or you feel like you need to do this or you need to do that, I my bold word to everyone that's listening to this is says who. Hmm. Says who. Says who. We're not telling you you have to go stress yourself out. I'm not telling you you have to have a six pack. I'm not telling you that you need to go change everything about yourself or that you're in you're inadequate. The devil loves to tell people they're inadequate, that they're not enough, that they're not loved. Like no one's telling you that except for sometimes a stupid phone. And I think that and again, it's not even the phone. It's like yeah. it's us talking to ourselves like I can't keep up. No, or that I you just need to know up. everything about everything. Yes. I, I mean like yeah, yeah, yeah. You need to be engaged. Yeah. Course, but the, you know, I mean, news stations know that the more afraid and anxious we are, the more we tune in, and it's like, do yeah. I really need to know every single yeah. detail, uh, every single moment of the day? So, so it's not to be long winded, but it's good. There's a good. There's beauty there. But I think we we would be remiss to not say wave the caution flag. Like yeah. literally, I think all of our news savers should. Eat. I have say I have divine mercy on my my back, my lock street, or like that screen, the wallpaper behind it. So I'm like, Jesus, you need to watch over everything. Mm. And I need you to remind me of who I am before I ever open a dang. Ooh, yeah. A good idea. Like remind me yeah, of who so I am true. because this just wants to destroy so me. True. And again, I feel for you all. I feel for you young adults because again, we're older. We didn't, we weren't raised with this insecurity 20. I mean, we had tons of insecurities, but the, the insecurity of just constantly feeling like you're not enough and that you're not loved is so real. And I'm so sorry that this attack is upon you. And yeah. anytime that you can put it down and, and get in touch with people who really love you and our Lord, who is desperately trying to get your attention to tell you that you're enough and that you're loved. Yeah. And not to be, there, I think it's a matter of being intentional about it. I mean, like, look, what we're doing here is a fruit of modern communication, right? right? So we can use it, for, we can use it, you know, but be intentional about it and not simply kind of just backed into it because we don't know what else. Yeah. To do. And just checking in too, I suppose, on what, what you're actually doing. I mean, if, if our perspective is that we're using this particular piece of technology for a purpose, it, it's as a tool, as opposed to getting into right. a relationship with it, because we're looking for validation, we're looking for, you know, for it to fill us. Well, then if we're in a relationship with it, we also need boundaries with it as with any healthy relationship. So <laughs> let's, let's put that in. <laughs> Tina, Tina, tweetable. Ah, That's right. I got boundaries. I can die my happy now. Sarah Swafford really just said I was tweetable. <laughs> Heck yes. Heck yes. I, I'm going to use that. Okay. You have boundaries so, in your relationship. You need boundaries of the relationship with your phone. That is good. That is really good. It's a you. very good way of saying it. Bless you. For, for real. Thank you. Uh, Andre. Friends in motion. We've heard you talk about friends in motion. Um, oh, gosh. Can, can you talk to us about this? Uh, we, we, we would love to hear sure. you uh, just sort of give us a bit of insight into what you mean when you talk about Friends in Motion. Yeah, so we were, I think you guys all know, we live across the street from about 2,000 university students, uni, uni students, um, and they are amazing. We, it's a Catholic, you know, it's a Catholic school. Um, a lot of students come for the faith and a lot of students come for the athletics or because their parents came here or because they love the academics. So it's really cool because we have a lot of different students from a lot of different backgrounds all over the country. Um, and so we hang out with them a lot. And Friends in Motion came from a lot of time with them. And Andy and I, get a, we get a lot of questions, real life questions. Um, and our book is actually answering, it's kind of like answering all those questions that we get all the time so that we can just get everybody in one room, yeah. Can men and women be friends? You know, questions like that. Um, and so we like kind of started using, he's really good at, I will describe the problem and he'll go, but that's really just this. And I'm like, that's, uh, that's the clarity. word. That's what clarity. it is. We didn't have, uh, yeah, like sometimes people be like, you articulate everything that I'm feeling, but I didn't have words for. Mm. I think that's what emotional virtue really did for a lot of people was, yeah, ah, uh, yeah. You know, like I'd, I'd see people like, 
I still see people's eyes like light up and I see like the actual light bulb well, go gave off. Them words yes. that empowered them. Mm. With, their, with their heart, right? So, but he's really good at coming up with them. So, friends in motion is actually something that Swath. We were talking with a, we were talking with some students, and we were trying to figure out. They were answering their questions, and friends in motion came up. So, yeah, I'm, I'll well, let you do it. I wrote a blog by that title for Jason Everett's website, ChastityProject.com. Mm -hmm. uh, dot com. Yeah. So, it, it and this um, maybe won't exist everywhere, but I've seen this in strong kind of Catholic communities or Christian communities where. Nobody dates. And, and it's, it's, it's Everyone like, just it's like I, and, and the classic line is, I don't want to lose our yeah. friendship. And my whole point with friends in motion is, okay, uh, respectfully, at your stage in life, young you, adults, just, you know, young Same, adults. Single young adults. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and here's the thing. The, I want to be careful here. The people that you're attracted to as friends probably have some of the same qualities you'd like to see in a spouse someday. And that's not meaning to say that we're only approaching friendship as like a means to an end. Right. I'm not saying that at all, but it, but it probably is the case that the people that you like to be around that you respect, that you admire probably are similar to the kind of person you'd like to end up with. Um, and so this, my basic point with the friends in motion is if you've got a good friend that has the character that you're looking for in a spouse and you click you have so much more to gain and so very little to lose by taking the chance. And by friends in motion, I simply mean life. I mean, just to be honest, life is going to sift these friendships out. Uh, one of the questions. Wait, I often, what do you mean by that? I think sometimes well, people are like, huh? Well, <laughs> well, I mean, well, the girls go, huh? well, what I mean is this. Here, here's my question. If you're really just friends, um, would you have the same conversations, do the same activities if, either one of you were seriously dating someone else. Right. Because if the answer is no, you're not just yeah. friends. And that's, that's okay. It's kind of part of the process, but let's be honest. Friends in motion is part by, of the process. What I mean by friends in motion is, you know, eventually when one, one of the other of you gets married to someone else, like this friendship can't stay as is forever. It's, it's honestly, it's, it's going to, it's, it's going to change. Not bad, just like, Yeah, but it, life is going to change this in 10 years. Um, and so let's just be honest about that and say, you know, you want to like capture in this moment, the, basically the goods, frankly, of having a relationship, the emotional support and stability and attention and familiarity of having a relationship, but you don't want to take the risk of commitment. And so you never take the chance to see what's there. And, and again, you have so much to gain if you took that chance and so very little to lose, just take the chance. And if you do this the right way, it doesn't have to be completely awkward. It might take some time to go back to friends, but yeah, you know, it, when you're in that kind of middle zone, I mean, my joking advice, and not, this may not play well on the street, but I'm like, look, you either need to kind of commit or get off the pot because mm -hmm. this kind of like gray zone where you just kind of stay here forever. It doesn't work. Uh, I mean, it, it, it plays with people's hearts, right. their emotions. It goes on after month, year after year. And it's like, just be honest, be clear, take the risk and just see what can happen because this could be a beautiful thing. Um, again, you just have so much to gain. So little to lose. Mm. Yeah, you know, a lot of people will be like, "Oh, like we can't, like we can't date because it'll just it'll change our friendship or it'll ruin our friendship." And I'm like, "Are you planning on sleeping together on the first night on your first opening date?" And they're like, "Oh my gosh, Sarah, what are you talking about?" I'm like, "Okay, well, if you're not planning on right. being sexual or making out or having sex, then." what are you thinking is going to happen on those first three dates <laughs> that you're stating your intentions right. and you're going out to coffee and you're talking about like, Hey, I'd love to get to know you better without our other 10 friends. That doesn't, I mean, like what's going to happen is you're going to see if you're compatible. I always say my, my three components for a great relationship are God chemistry and timing. So the God aspect, are we on the same page? Do we have the same values? Are we, you know, are we pursuing the Lord together? You know, timing, Sometimes timing is just not good for people. Someone left the country. Someone just got out of a relationship. Somebody, you know, whatever. And then chemistry is like the tricky one. Because a lot of times people are like, on paper, we look great. And then they get together like, this is awkward. Like, we're great friends, but we do not have the chemistry for this. So I always tell people, I'm like, you need a couple dates. You already have sifted them out in some ways because you're really good friends with them. Or you're fr I want you to be friends with them. I want you to bring him or her into your friend circle, which is why it's so important to invest in that friend circle because you get to see how they interact. This is emotional virtue 101. Mm -hmm. If you've read the book, you know this is 101, right? You invite, you You have worked hard as ladies. You ladies, you're working hard to get your girl squad together. They're, they're your people because you don't need to go grab a guy and make him your God, right? 
And all of a sudden you have these women that you can turn to like, I'm tired. I'm desperate. I'm feeling really down. I'm despairing. I feel fat. I feel ugly. I feel far from God. You can take that to your girl squad or the guys can take it. You know, I'm struggling with this and that. They're not going to the opposite sex and looking for someone to fill them up emotionally. And when you have that, and then you find that with a group of, of people, the like I had my, we had Swath and his group of guy friends. We were really good friends, like those two groups. And it wasn't a flirt fest or like, mm. oh, I like the one in pink. <laughs> oh, no. like, it was more just like, wow, I have never had guy friends before. I like that one. I like that one. <laughs> but, it, but we were friends for two years before we dated. And I knew everything I needed to know about Swath before, not everything. I knew he was the, Andy always says this. I knew she was the kind of person mm. that I could marry. I didn't know if she was the one. Yeah. Hmm. So you walk into it with your friends and you go, man, I, you know, I really like, but it was, it was like a couple dates before you have the second DTR, right? I'd love to get to know you better. First DTR, state your intentions before you have some dates and you go down that path and you go, wow, this is like really great. I am really thinking that. And this is how Swaff asked me. He's like, I'd love for you to just pray about like whether or not you see us serving God together or separate, because I love running with you as a friend. So let's just pray about it. Let's just go on a couple of dates and see what happens. And I was like, that doesn't sound scary. Mm. I can do mm. that. And we went on a few dates. We had a great time. We didn't drop all of our friends. One more time. Yes. We didn't <laughs> drop all of our friends. Preach it. Um, we were still good friends with all of our friends. We hung out. They were actually really crucial in helping us discern mm -hmm. whether or not we mm. wanted to right. date. And then we started down the road. We were like, hey, we should totally make this official. I think we should date. Um, and that was like that second but then we were still dating right? and we weren't sleeping together. Right. So even if we would have ended, even if we would have ended that, I don't even think we had kissed or anything like no. that. Like we were just really good friends mm. for again, dating, but still like friends, but dating, it didn't look drastically different. Right. And I think that that's why I always tell people, look, it depends on how you play the game. Because if Swaff and I would have went on a couple dates, maybe two months of like dating and we looked at each other and was like, okay, you're awesome. But I think you might be awesome for Sally Sue, my other friend, because like, I, I just don't have, we don't have the chemistry or we don't have, you know, we just didn't hit it off or like the timing's bad. Like I'm still recovering from some things I'm healing from or whatever, whatever it is, then we could have gone back to being friends. And I'm not like saying we're tooting our horns. I'm just saying we've seen this happen right. with other people. And I think like Andy and I was talking about, sometimes it's just like, take the risk. Right. What do you have to well, lose? What you're getting Three at dates. Is, it's okay. Is it didn't change that much. And even though I knew it had the potential to run the distance, a first date is not a marriage proposal. And I think people, and they put all this pressure on themselves and then they just never do it. Yep. And we have incredible men, incredible women who go four years to university. Like I've never been on a date. I'm like, <laughs> why are we doing this? <laughs> Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, we have our work cut out in America because um, everyone's kind of paralyzed right now. It's yeah. like, I'm just scared. You know, we were talking about um, like back in the day, it was like fight or flight, like your, your response to fear. It's like, and father Mike, we were at a conference with father Mike and, and he was like, no, it's not fight or flight. It's, it's fight flight, but more often than not, it's freeze. Yes. So Right now it's like, oh, I just don't want to screw this up. So I'm going to do nothing. Like I don't even, I'm not even going to look in her direction because I just might screw it up or I don't know what to do or it's too hard. It's too much work. And, you know, I, one of the things I wrote about in our book is the four fears. Um, so fear of missing out, which a lot of people <laughs> are familiar with. Um, I think social media, fear of missing out um, is strong. I think the stronger one is uh, fear of being forgotten. Mm. I think it's actually a stronger fear than even fear of missing out. Um, and then fear of rejection, uh, my, my favorite fear, <laughs> uh, fear of rejection is my one that I struggle with the most and then fear of failure. So as, you know, as young adults, it's like, if anything smells like one of those four fears, you know, I just like heighten alert and dating is, is just all of those. And I think that what happens is, is a lot of times I think people are like, I would rather just watch from the sidelines and I, I don't even know if I want to the opposite sex because it's just too scary it's too risky um and, and anyway, i want to time out so podcast time out time out everything we say and everything we are saying is hard we are not everything that we are talking about is not easy and that's why i get really like huh i get like fierce and fired up because i'm like i just want to help and i just want to take away your pain and your sorrow and your grief and your loneliness and your isolation and your doubt 
and the fear that you're not enough and the fear that you'll never be happy. Like, I just want to, I want to take it all away and I want to punch in the face everything that's making you feel that way. So I come across as really strong, but it's because I'm like so passionate about this. And I just want you to know that everything we talk about, we are not sitting over here in America going, it's so easy. (laughs) Just Like that's not what we're saying. Like we are saying this is hecka hard and you are in a dog fight. And just don't sit at your house and think that you're in this alone because you are not like we are hearing this from everyone that that this is just so hard. And we just want you to know that you're not alone. And we want to give you tools to at least try. It's like whack-a-mole. Do you guys have that game (laughs) in in Australia where the mole comes up and you pop it and it comes up again and you pop it? I feel like that's where young adults are right now. You're like, yeah, I got it. What the heck is that? No, no, no. Like it's just a constant like attacker everywhere. And we just want you to feel empowered and excited about the fact that it doesn't just have to be the way that not only the world and social media portrays it, um, but it doesn't have to be so full of anxiety and fear and like hollowness. Mm. You know what I mean? I just, I see a lot of emptiness right now and I'm just sad and I'm mad and I'm fired up, obviously. Sorry, swaff note. Swaff note. It's me yeah, going, yeah. Oh, it's it. beautiful. I, I want. I just want people to know that we know it's not. E- I, I'm sorry. I want people to know that we know it's not. E- yeah, that's mm-hmm. beautiful. There's there's something there that that sort of strikes me in in relation to what Padre and I talk about on this podcast, on the Living Fullness podcast, in terms of friendship, um, and we often talk about risk, and that actually love means that there will be risk on this earth. Like that is something that we consistently have to remind ourselves and um and dialogue around and so when it comes to what you're talking about in terms of friends in motion and there being an element of risk involved of course yes yes there's an element of risk but if you truly love that person not in the romantic sense necessarily but truly as a friend and you want the good of the other you are going to do whatever is required to protect them and shield them and take care of them so you know in the example that you you two both use there of each other you know if if there was a position where the two of you felt that your friendship um, couldn't move into the romantic space. The fact that the two of you had a, a good enough friendship to be able to then turn around and say, hey, I don't think you and I are meant to be together, despite the fact that you're awesome, I think you're actually better suited for someone else. You've actually got the best intention for the other person in mind. You've got their good in mind. Whereas that almost seems yeah. like a foreign concept when it comes to friendship like it it can be so because who do we have actually coaching us (laughs) in this space about how to grow an authentic friendship the other thing that i would say is um and this is for all my men out there um a lot of times people are like oh you talk about relationships so you like do women's ministry i'm like dude it takes two to date like what are we talking about like it takes can't girls can't date themselves um and so i always tell the guys and girls, I have a lot of guys that come to me often that um, confide in us that they were a part of a breakup mm. or a relationship that didn't go well. <clears throat> and I think a lot of times girls have people to talk to about it. And a lot of times guys do not. Mm. And um, they, or they're like, oh, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we move. We, we went our separate ways. It's fine. And they're not OK. And it, it was really hard on them. Um, and so for the men and the women out there, but especially for the men, because I think a lot of times They don't, like you just said, they don't have anybody to coach them on this, right? Um, But I've had a lot of college guys in my kitchen uh, on campus where they they open up about a breakup and how they're just like, yeah, I'm still not okay. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to be really honest. Mm -hmm. Like, it rocked me, you know? And uh, and I always look at them and I was like, look, big sister talk, like, you don't want to hear this, but sometimes rejection is the greatest form of clarity. Mm -hmm. And the fact that that this that this woman, this girl was honest enough with you to say, hey, I think I think we're better suited as friends. Like, I care for you. You're going to make an awesome you know, if God calls you, you're gonna make an awesome husband and father someday. And I'm excited to see what God's going to do in your life. Like, yeah, that stings. And, it, and you can take that as just straight up rejection or you can look at that and say, I am so glad yeah. that she loved me enough yeah. to tell me the hard truth and to give me clarity right. because I see so many people like, like this guy, that guy, you know, a guy, the guy that I'm working with or, or like talking with and he's just, I'm like, she could have strung you along for six months. She could have not been honest with you or not been, yeah. you know, just clear with you. And I said, you don't want to be in love with someone that's not in love with you because again, and, and this goes into we're, we're writing about breakups too right now. And so it's like, it's so hard. We see so many people that are in love with someone else. 
that just wants to be their friend and they miss the person that's actually in love with them. We're wrapped up in who they think they should be with or who they used to be with, even if it's just social media and not in person, that they completely miss because everyone knows. I think people are pretty in tune with, yeah, she's not over him yet. Or yeah, he's not over her yet. And so I can't pursue her or him because I know they're not over them yet or they are still in love with them or that, or, or even he or she's in love with them and they don't even know it, but I know it. And so sometimes saying like, I think we should just be friends or saying, Hey, I know you like me and you want something more from this or, or you're, you're wanting to go with this, with this friendship in in a different direction. Um, but I just want to be honest with you, whether it's God chemistry or timing, like maybe even just saying like, I just don't feel like this is probably um, right for us. Yeah. Or, you know, I feel like I've, I've written, I've helped people write so many breakup letters oh. um, that I feel like I, 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 I mean, it's just like sitting there and yeah. being like, this is what needs to not say it. Well, it's about it's just hard. It's about clarity. And, and, you know, we, we tell people prepare for marriage all the time, but, you know, problems that you have now are not going to go away in marriage. They're going to get amplified. They're going to get compounded. They're going to be, be magnified. So, uh, if the things you're kind of uncomfortable with and, and it kind of starts to increase, like look where that trajectory is going. And that's a sign that, um, you know, the sooner you recognize it, the better off everybody is. Yeah. And also a shout out to chastity. Shout out chastity. Hey, right, nobody wants to talk about it, but it's super important. It <laughs> explains um, and it blinds. Yeah. And it doesn't help clarity. No. Yeah. That's always people like, oh, how do I get over that? Makeup them? sex is a real thing. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Right. Mm. Mm. So as I was telling people, I'm like, if you, I was like, breakups are going to be the worst and hardest thing in your life. It's going to continue to be that unless you change the way you date. Yeah. Yeah. And everyone's like, Oh, Oh. And I'm like, I'm just being like everything I'm saying, I am trying to save you heartache. And I always tell people, I'm like, if you're dating someone that you can't see yourself marrying, then you're not dating them. You're dating heartache because that is what you are dating. And it's always just so hard. You can almost feel the air come out of the room when I'm like, when I speak on this stuff, cause they're just like, wow. But it's like, look, Don't waste a year, two years, three years of your life. Don't hurt out of respect for them and yourself. You have to be, I always tell everybody, repeat after me, sincerity and clarity. Sincerity and clarity. The greatest gift you can give someone as a friend that might be a friend in motion or even your future spouse someday is sincerity and clarity. No matter what stage on the natural progression you are, you are at, you have to be sincere and clear. It's just going to be a lot of heartache. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I mean, you take it, but one thing that can connect the drop in the handkerchief mm. and the friends in motion is, is, is I know, you know, in different cultures and you know, contexts, well, the, the, the guy needs to make the ask and the woman wants to be pursued and we don't want to make it easy on the guys. And, and yes, yes, yes. And yes. Uh, but the whole handkerchief, that whole, like that whole little reel is that we call yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, the point was, yeah, but she kind of chose him. Right. So like, I, I, you know, I encourage ladies, don't be afraid to like drop the hint. And if you've, you know, and there's different ways to drop the handkerchief and, you know, different places to do it differently. But if you keep dropping the hint again and again, and they're not responding, as I joke with my students, I'm like guys are dense, but they're not that mm. dense. Yeah. Um, They'll eventually pick up on yeah, it. They probably if they... aren't interested if you keep dropping the hint. But my point is what I think is more important than kind of purity of, in terms of who asks who. We just need clarity. We need to get the ball rolling. I, I, in terms of like the initial show of interest, I don't, frankly don't care who makes that first. Well, I think the guy should make the commitment. The guy should say, what are we? I want to commit to you. I think he should t- take the pursue, risk. Pursue. 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 Uh, but I think we need to kind of get the ball rolling. And I think human cultures have always done that. I think sometimes in Catholic and Christian cultures now, there's like a resistance to that. And sometimes you have ladies along the wall that are afraid to pursue it all. And guys that are like, I, there's no way she's interested in me because she's not even looking my direction at all. And I think throughout history, you know, she looks your way. She mm-hmm. smiles at you. I'm like, guys, if she laughs at your jokes, that means she likes you. Especially if you're not that <laughs> right? I mean, so, you know, there's different ways to skin the cat and ways to do this, but I think that's important to kind of be okay with this interaction mm-hmm. so that we kind of get the ball rolling. And then, you know, that helps the guys step up, frankly. Mm. My last, last thing, my joke is we were talking about like the modern day handkerchief. I was talking to some, some college women and this is what we came up with. Okay. You should carry two cell phones. One is like your cell phone that you actually use. And the other one is like an old cell phone <laughs> that's been dropped. Oh, you're three, ten, and seven. literally walk on the street. And if you like, I'm, I'm kidding. But I mean, if you see a guy, just drop your cell phone because he's in. Oh, you dropped your cell phone. Like that's a big deal. 
<laughs> and he's gonna pick it up. And he's gonna be like, you dropped your cell phone. And she's it. gonna be like, oh, did Fantastic. I? Oh, thank you. <laughs> it looked like I got hit by a truck, but thank you so much. I'm kidding. But yeah, drop your phone. Oh. Drop, not your real phone. Yeah. Drop your fake phone. So somebody picks it up. That's my modern day Bless. handkerchief because I like it. People Bless. actually care about your phone. Yeah. So. And then if he asks, oh, do you want to check if it works? Then you've got a conversation going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now yeah, let me try to call you real quick. What's your number? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Hey, That's Dana. Great. Dana, Dana go, check Dana. it. Take it to the next level. Oh, well done. Work. Cracker. Oh, well, this has been an okay, absolute pleasure. Okay, do you have time for one more? Pardon? Okay, not, we don't even have time no, for do one it, more. No, do it. Do it. There is no way I'm going to say no to you, Sarah. Just ask, do it. ask us a question. Last question. Go for it. <laughs> I will, we'll make it very short because we got, I think we answered two of your questions. <laughs> so look, the last thing I was going to ask was, can you tell us a bit more about the book and what, like, when can we look out for it? Where should we look out for it? That kind of thing. So fun. Yes. Uh, two things. One, we actually just announced today, um, Ascension Press, which I know you guys are familiar with Ascension Press. Um, or you maybe have heard of Ascension Press. They do a lot of amazing studies. They did the Bible. Yeah. You know, Father Mike. Yes, yes. All that stuff. Um, last August, about a year ago, we actually flew over to Rome for 10 days and did um, 10 days in Rome. And it's basically, it's called What We Believe, um, The Beauty of the Catholic Faith. And we basically took a we basically took everyone on a pilgrimage with us and we did um, all the beauty and all the churches and we taught the creed through the churches. Um, so we had just an amazing time and it's a, it's like a digital download DVD series and also Andy and um, this amazing guy. I don't know if you guys know Dr. Italy. So if you know, Dr. D'Ambrosio, Marcellino. Um, so if you know him, he's awesome, but we basically, they wrote a book. So we wrote a book by that title and then that book, also is the, the study that we filmed on site in Rome. So if, if you like beauty, history, kind of what we believe and why as Catholics, uh, mm-hmm. that, that's what it's about. So that just came out. The book that we're talking about together, though, will yep. come out next summer. In, so we have two books that are kind of coming the, out, one now and one will come out yeah, next summer. I think the best way to describe the one we're doing right now together, though, is uh, in spring of 2018, mm-hmm. We uh, so Benedictine's got a, a campus in Florence, Italy. Uh, and so I taught over there. I don't know. We had four kids at the time and 48 students taught my class in Joppa a second. And I guess in short, conversions were happening. And, and this is kind of a, you know, a cross section of the campus. Uh, some serious about the faith, some not, but lots of things happen. This book that we're writing together is really kind of how do we package the formation we gave them there in literary form? So it's I, I mean, it's kind of a life coaching thing. It, it, it's 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 virtue. It's friendship. It, it's a little bit of, of dating, but it's not just on dating. Uh, but it's so the, the um, working title, the wor- well, the working title is Meaning and Grit, uh, mm-hmm. because so many people, their lives are a story with no plot and you give your life meaning, which is exhausting. Uh, but as it's Ratzinger scary. once said, you know, what we're longing for, I mean, meaning that is self-made is no meaning at all. We want to have meaning to see from all high. We want a part to play in this great story. And so what gives our life meaning? And then do we have the grit to carry it out? and see it through when, when, when the enthusiasm hits some bumps in the road yep. uh, and it, 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 you know, we've got to, we've got to push through, not just merely in kind of a stoic way, but in a truly virtuous and sanctified way um, in any walk of life, priest, religious, married, single, what have you. We basically wrote it kind of around our, our Island, all the conversations that happened in our house a lot, things that happened over in Italy. Um, we really got a front row seat to what everyone's really struggling with right now. Um, and I think COVID really compounded it. And so it's just really getting into the nitty gritty of how do you be friends with the opposite sex? Um, we talk about emotional virtue, like in relationships, but also, you know, what does it look like when you're married? And um, we've, we talked a little bit about just like taking it, taking everything a, a step like deeper. So we go into breakups, we go into friends in motion. We talk about freights. A lot of people are starting this thing called freights where they go on friend dates. Mm. Um, they'll like, dates and really? we talk about just like how do you navigate mm-hmm. all of these different things that are happening <laughs> that <was my> response. <laughs> <laughs> all right, it's like emotional intimacy emotional intimacy with people that you're not dating yeah so we have a hookup <sighs> culture and then we have this other like subculture um there's a lot we talk a lot about just like what does it mean to be all in with the lord mm-hmm. because i think a lot of people sometimes stand like kind of stand on the periphery and be like I mean, I go to church sometimes, but like, I really struggle with this and I really struggle with this and don't ask me about my relationships. And, you know, like just what does it mean to really take that next step? 
Um, and I think a lot of people, people have begged us to write this book for a long time and it just kind of seemed like the right time. Um, and again, it's, it's just journeying with a, a, some older, like we always love being like a big brother, big sister. And uh, so it's really just us kind of loving through. It's it's very hard to write about it. We would much rather speak about it. Um, but if we, we felt like it, this, the words needed to go somewhere. Mm. And so we're putting it into this book called Meaning and Grit. Oh, we can't be everywhere. And we can't be everywhere. We could. We wish we could come to everyone's kitchen island and serve cookie dough and wine, depending on your age or chicken wings, and um, and just kind of hang out. But it's kind of hanging out with us and answering a lot of life's hard questions. We do it in question and answer kind of. Fun. Awesome! Ah, oh, this sounds amazing. So spring of next year is when we're looking out for it. Yeah, pray yep. for us. Yep. It's due. It's due in August, and we're still writing because okay. it's like a lot of. Things. All right. Definitely. All right. Definitely. Yep. Yep. So watch for it. Beautiful. Absolutely. Well, Sarah and Andy, thank you so much for joining us uh, for this this podcast today. And it's been beautiful to have you uh, on and and to have you share the wisdom that you've picked up over a, a, a seventeen years of marriage and 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 also the the, the period of your ministry, which is just uh, it's how long have you been ministering for, by the way? How long have you been? Oh man. 2008, 2009. Well, yeah. I started teaching in fall of 2007. Uh, and, then, and my ministry um, started kind of on the heels of that. 2010 okay, probably okay. would be the most, 2011. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah it's been a while. So it's, it's yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and the, the, the learnings that you've shared, shared from that and the uh, the way that you've shared them with us, the, 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 the passion that you've shared them with us. Thank you. Kind of yeah, Father Burns, thank you, thank you all for all that you do and your witness. Uh, yeah. it's really a blessing to to be with you all today. Yeah, I have to share this. I was telling Swaff um, when I first met you, Cena. I remember you took like a train and a plane and an automobile. <laughs> <laughs> I remember meeting you, and I was like, "This girl," I was like, "She's just strikingly beautiful, oh, She's bless so faithful." You. And I remember just no, literally, oh. I remember thinking. And I think I told Charbel, I was like, "That girl." Like the Holy Spirit has an anointing oh. on her life and she is going to do something. And then when mm. you started doing ministry, you were so cute. You were like, do you care if I use your book <laughs> and use the discussion questions? I'm like, girl, that is why I wrote the discussion <laughs> questions. Take them, print them, put them under people's doors, on people's cars, do whatever you need to do. Um, because I know that the battle is hard over there. And I never want you to feel discouraged because I know that it can get really frustrating over in Australia because you're there's just so few people who are paying attention and like, Really, they're just so, they're so stuck sometimes. And but I am telling you, you guys are lights, and mm. people are really the darkness is just getting overwhelming, and they're looking for the light. And so, thank you for being a light. And I'm so grateful for all the work you guys are doing over there in Australia. And we can't wait to come back and hang out. Yeah. So we're praying, oh, my Lord, make you. that happen. We would love to come hang out with you guys. But thank you for all that you guys do. Thank you, thank you for being such great witnesses as well, and you know, role modeling essentially from the other mm. side of the world for us. So thank you for that. Oh gosh. Mm. Yeah, it's been a blast. God bless yeah. you guys. Thanks so much for having. Us. So we will end this episode with a couple of rapid fire questions, which is what we throw at all of our guests. Oh, that's right oh my gosh i love it um so there's probably like six questions and we'll just take it in turns um for this one this though America. because you're a couple we thought we might ask you to guess the answer of your spouse <laughs> just to just to mix it up a little <laughs> that's fun so for your it. spouse which would they pick first question tea or coffee and how Ooh, i know Swaff is coffee black. Good man. This is true. All right. Uh, <laughs> you would say coffee with like an ounce of coffee and a whole lot of cream and sugar and other uh, uh, niceties. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the wax. Cream and sugar with a shot of coffee. Just enough caffeine <laughs> to make it work. Like I need the caffeine. I don't want to taste it. But we're opposites. Yeah. Um, what things or moments create a sense of nostalgia for them. Oh, nostalgia. My answer for you? Yeah. That's a beautiful question. That is a great question. Um, nostalgia. We have so many different points in our well, life. Well, yeah. I mean, songs for you, I yeah. think, would be one. I'm a, I love music. Uh, I love praise and worship. I love I, Yeah, I feel like all the senses, like smells remind you of stuff. I know. I love songs, smells. visuals. You're much more observant. Than that, that's true. Um, I would say for Swaff, nostalgia for Swaff 
he has an unbelievable memory. Um, like, well, he'll be like, we took a lot of classes together from Dr. Ted Shreve, you know, Dr. Edward Shree. Uh, he was our professor in college. He really, we wouldn't be, we wouldn't be married without him because he wouldn't be Catholic without him. And, um, so we, we really love Dr. Shree. We, we owe so much to Dr. Shree and his wife, Beth. They're the godparents of our eldest son, Thomas. Um, yeah. And so, but I would say for you, um, like anytime we run into like, a quote or even like a saying or something, he'll be like, yeah, do you remember Dr. Shree said that in moral life class when we were sophomores? And I'm like, what? Wow. Like, I don't like what I had for lunch. <laughs> like, or he'll, he'll like run into like a, you know, he's like such a nerd. He's a very good looking dork. But I'm like, oh my gosh, or I'll say something uh, like a quote. And I'm like, oh, I love this quote from the saint. He's like, oh yeah, it's in the book, da, 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 da. Oh, I love that book. I read it, da, da, da. I'm like, I just know the quote. I don't even know what book it's in. So yeah, I just, he's got a phenomenal memory. And so for me to like recall, he has a great recall, uh, which comes very in handy being married to someone with great recall. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, pa Padre, we have a follow-up question for that, which we'll ask in the Patreon section, I think. Yes. Oh, yeah. I know. Bonus totally, totally. <laughs> Love it. Um, question three is who would be their holy crush and why? <laughs> Who would be their holy, holy crush? So like the, you know, <laughs> oh saintly crush, Bible crush. Who's your favorite oh my patron gosh, saint? saint. <laughs> Padre <laughs> hates this question. <laughs> wait, wait, this is fun because I have literally never thought of this. Like a saint yeah, crush. So, so, so not a, okay. <laughs> he's like, yeah, he's like. He's like um, well, and that's uh, part of why I hate it. <laughs> well, I, I think I got yours. No way, he already knows my saint crush. Fulton Sheen. Yes, yes I love Fulton Sheen. Oh. I mean, JP2. Yeah. JP2. Yeah, yeah. I call JP2 the Catholic homecoming king. Oh. Like, who didn't want to hate that, that, that's me? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Besides JP2. Totally. Uh, yeah, I would say JP2 or Fulton Sheen are both. Oh. It's always funny. It's like the question of who do you want to chat with in heaven first? Yeah. yeah. Like, oh, I have too yeah. many stuff. Yeah, yeah. I have too many stuff. <laughs> um, I don't know. As a female saint, I, you have so many, like, favorite male saints. I'm trying to think of the fun, like, holy crush. I would say probably. Call me sexist. No. <laughs> I'm saying that you probably love. Well, I'm going to go with St. Catherine of Siena Ooh. because we named our daughter after her. I would also say Mother Teresa. Mm. Like, I think mm. she's she's really high on our female saints. Yeah, those are good. Those Saint are good. Dymphna, we love Saint oh, Dymphna. Yeah, y'all yeah, do you know Saint Dymphna? We love her. Yeah. Who's your? I mean, you have to tell me. I don't even know. I, 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 tell me I, so I, I can. I don't know jealous. if I know, but I think Edith Stein. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Edith Stein. Oh. Yeah, you, couldn't, you couldn't go past her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. we love, we love that World War Two. The Saints mm. of World War Two. Mm. Yeah. Giants. Yeah. Mm. Good one. Mm. Good one. Good one. Good one. Yeah, done good. Great question. Um, I love questions we've never thought. What I know. does your Very spouse much. find most challenging about ministry? Ooh. Man, these are good. Oh, I, I think I. No, I, I, I know. I know what I would say for you. I'm kind of laughing because I think I know what you would say for me. But actually, I'm kind of excited to hear what it, I, well, I'm like interested to see what. Uh, yeah, I don't want to say the wrong thing. <laughs> I think it the I mean it, it's sort of like um, you know those phrases like the uh, the good can become the enemy of the best or the perfect when it's contrary to God's will. I think the most challenging part is I think the question right. Um, she does a lot of things really well, really really well. Um, and see, I, you know, and I think she knows that if she only were doing like one of them, she could do that one even better. So I think it's, it's, um, you know, it's, it's hard for you to let go of not doing as good as you possibly could make, you know, I mean, just cause you, you love people and you want to help them. Mm -hmm. Um, but we also have five kids and it's just kind of keeping the whole thing running well. And I'm like, that's an A plus, but she's like, I know, but if I were only doing this or this or this, I could get like an A, you know, off the charts. And I think that's, yeah, that's hard for someone who is so competent and has, has succeeded so well in everything. Whereas I, I just kind of give up on perfection. Right? I'm like, well, this, <laughs> this is all I can do. So, uh, but I, I, I might be wrong. That, no, that's 100% guess, right. So. As a, as a mom and we do a homeschool co-op and then running a house and cooking and being a domestic diva and then having a ministry and just living across the street from 2000 college students, when I get, I, I get asked to do a lot and I love it all, but like Andy always 
it's like, I can only do so many things. And so sometimes it's really spread thin and I have to pray really hard what to say yes to and what to say no to, but I'm a yes person and I hate saying no, especially when I, know that I, I want to be somewhere. Or I want to be there for someone. Um, so that's the hardest, I would say the hardest thing for me in ministry is discerning what can I do and what can't I do and letting people down, but I can never let down my husband and my children. And so it just, sometimes you just have to, you know, or you just have to say, this is the, this is all I got. This is the best I can do. And I'm really sorry. You know, like we don't have a podcast because I just can't get to it. We just, we, it's not a stage in life where we can. And I feel really bad because I know mm. that people ask for it and it would be great, but we love coming on your podcast. Yeah, exactly. Um, exactly. My, my, my thing for Swaff would definitely be, um, he is an amazing teacher and like the students are just, his classes fill in like a minute. You have to like hit submit as fast as you possibly can <laughs> to get into his classes. Um, and so it's really great to be able to like have students and have a whole semester to be able to really like speak what you want to them and versus speaking, which is you have to try to like get everything into like 40 minutes. And like Swaff always says, and I have to be funny and I have to be like organized and, and like I have to land the plane and I don't have, you know, and, and you have to be winsome. And so I would say like, you would probably say part of the hardest things in ministry is just like translate, like what is when you're teaching and when you're mm-hmm. speaking sure. yeah. yeah, and just like how to do both well and to navigate both and how, you know, I don't know. I think that that's for us, both of us, it's always just navigating. We only have so much time, but we want to like, I mean, one of my favorite saint quotes that I, I don't know which saint said it, but it says the Lord has set me on fire and people come to watch me burn. <laughs> and that's just one of my favorite quotes. Cause it's like, we're just on fire and we love hanging out with people. So whether it's in the classroom or it's at our house or it's in, you know, with a, with 18,000 people at a seat conference for focus, it's, it doesn't, I'm going to say the same things every time. I'm going to say the same things, whether there's 10 people or 10,000 people in my house. Uh, or in, I've, in, seen, I've seen both happen. It's this exact same thing. <laughs> I mean, it's just the same thing. I'm just like, we burn with the love of God and we want people to burn with us. And so it it just navigating how to do that well and not be, and still be whole and still be full and still be praying and still be parenting and still be, you know, our, our relationship is the greatest witness to our children and in ministry. And so our, our love for each other. And so making sure that like our marriage is spot on and, and just like the Lord is the Lord of every aspect of our lives that can get to be a lot sometimes. Mm. And so the hardest thing in ministry of us is navigating all of that and not feeling spread too thin and still feeling like a whole person. Mm. Yeah. Isn't that a challenge for, I, I imagine that would be yeah. a challenge for nearly everyone who's in ministry as well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and spiritual attack is real. Yeah. So you always yes, are kind of like, it out yes, with the devil is. too. So yeah. that's, that's always yeah. Yeah. Up the, the, the gauntlet. <laughs> but that's a great question too. Sorry. We're long. It's okay. We love long. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so the final question, um, and you can you can probably answer this question together. What is your favorite part about your family? Oh, I went first every time. I'll let you go first, but I think I know what you're going to say too. What do you think I'm going to say? Gosh, uh, well, I, I I think uh, in some way I'm not sure exactly how to put it, but um, we all we all really like to be together. Um, so we were age 16 to three. And so we have two teenagers uh, and, you know, for, you know, we're not that long way to go, not done yet by any means, but um, the teenage years have been, there've been some bumps, but they've been exciting. They've been fun. And, and I really do think, um, you know, when you, you know, pray for us, we're praying for you all. I had a colleague, veteran dad said a long time ago, he's like, look, your kids become the kind of people that were they not your children, you would call them your friends. And there, you can see among all of us, certainly me and you, certainly the older kids, um, but just a, um, cause I, I think, I think to have authentic love, you know, we talk about willing the good virtue, holiness. Um, but it's important to have fun together. It's important to have that emotional. It can't simply be based on nothing but emotions. But once you have the objective framework, we really need as, as spouses, as friends, as siblings, I mean, to kind of foster that emotional bond, that emotional warmth. Right. So uh, I think I think so often the culture is like, you know, the culture says love's a feeling. We say it's an act of the will. It's like, well, no, no it is an act of the will. Yes. Mm-hmm. But when you're in that framework now, let's make an act of the will to connect emotionally yep. because that will foster you. Yeah aspect yeah. of love yeah. and friendship and I, I i not to brag but i feel like our family is you see the kids with us we 
I mean, I've taken that to heart years ago, and I think we've really kind of tried to make that happen. And, uh, you know, a phrase that I, I I understand it, but I don't like is quality time. Mm-hmm. And I get it. Busy. But in my experience, like the breakthrough conversations when come, come about when you shoot the breeze long enough, like you spend enough quantity of time uh, and the quality mm-hmm. happens. It just makes it overnight from whole cloth from nothing. Uh, and so really like being together, hanging out and enjoying each other's company. That's when those breakthrough conversations happen in my experience. And I think yeah. I, I just really love that aspect. Mm-hmm. Of that the most. Cool. Yeah. He took my answer, of course. <laughs> but, I mean, like, everything he said, everything he said, yes and amen. Uh, one of the things that I think I would add is uh, when we were in college, um, we used to always joke that if you wanted to sound like smart, just use the word ontological. Um, so like if, you're, if, you're, if you're having a drink with someone, be like, well, the ontological reality, Absolutely. like, okay, get a cigar. Talk about ontological. <laughs> but, but the Sorry, word. Sorry, I'm Yeah, yeah, yeah. Throw the word ontological. Um, but one of my favorite <laughs> words that we learned in college was the word telos. Um, mm. And it means like same worldview, same goal, same destination, same. We're going to this on the same direct in the same direction, and we actually talk a lot. We on date nights. It seems like it comes up every date night where it's like, I'm just so grateful to God that we are on the same page, that we have the same tell us because parenting, finances, um, you know, love, love life. Like we do all the ma- we do a lot of marriage prep. We do a lot of you know just different. We do a lot with marriage. We do a lot with um, couples even our age that are you know hit, hitting almost like 20 years married, and you've got teens and a lot of, you know, we just do a lot of different age groups. And, um, if you stop having fun together and if you're not on the same page on like the big things, I think it makes, it makes life really, really hard. Um, and life's already hard. I'm like, dude, we're not perfect. We get at each other. We have, we have crucial conversations about things. You know I mean? Like we're, no one's perfect and, and life is very real and life is very messy. Mm-hmm. And, and like, we, you know, it's emotional and it's spiritual and it's fun, but it's also, you know, you're not always on your A game. You get tired, you get hangry, you get in a funk, you are down, you know, you have kids that are in funks, you have, you know, you just have stuff. And so I think for everyone that's out there listening, you know, right now, it's like, life is hard. And when you find good friends and good mentors and good priests and good religious, and, you know, just, it is so worth taking the time to find them and to invest in them and to love them because they might end up being your crew. And what I mean by that is that, you know, you might end up marrying someone in that crew or you might end up finding your vocation through those friendships. And so it's worth it because we're the fruit of it's worth it. And everyone, you know, a lot of the college students are like, oh, I just really I love your marriage. I love your family. I just want to be you. And I'm like, oh, you should have been around for the first couple of years. Like it was so hard. It was so navigating grad school and little kids. And we had two kids by the time I was 23. Like we were really young, young parents. We were it was just a, it was a mess. And so I always tell people, I'm like, we're the fruit of sticking it out. Mm. We're the fruit of saying, we have the same tell us, this is hard. We're going to just like stay close to Jesus and just battle this out. And so I think I just really, while we're ending some of this, it's just like, man, it is like, it is worth the risk to just dive in and love hard because yeah, there'll be, there'll be rejection and there'll be times where you're, you know, confused and it's going to be hard and there's going to be struggles, but dude, this is worth it. Like what else is worth it? Um, you know what I mean? To know your vocation, you know, looking at father here or to know, you know, the, the, just the struggle is real, but so is the joy and the fruit and just the, the, again, the companionship and the fellowship. And we love what we have, but we work at it mm-hmm. and we, we've worked for mm-hmm. it and we've prayed and we've prayed together and it, it doesn't just happen. And so again, in our family, we're close, we love each other, but it's because we spend a lot of time together and we invest in each other. If that makes any absolutely. sense. Absolutely. Yes. yes. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Not easy. Worth it. Yeah. Beautiful. Oh, thank you so much for being on the podcast with us today, Andrew and Sarah. It's been an absolute Thanks for privilege. having us. We love you yeah, guys. We're likewise. praying for you all over there. Likewise. Yeah. I'm praying for you too. Hmm. Thank and for you. all of you who've joined either on YouTube or listening to our podcast, if you would like to see the behind the scenes conversations that we're about to have with Andrew and Sarah, jump over to our Patreon page and subscribe to one of the higher tiers where we'll continue the conversation. But until next time, as always, know of our love and prayers. God bless. Thank you so much for joining us this week on Living Fullness. We hope that in this episode, there was something useful or helpful or something that blessed your life. If that is the case, 
would you please consider sharing this podcast with someone? Perhaps it will bless their lives too. Please also subscribe to the podcast and leave us a review. That will also help others to find the podcast too. And join us over on our social media, Living Fullness on Instagram and Virtue Ministry on Facebook. Facebook.